Today, we're visiting Diamonds Are Forever and Octopussy filming locations in the United States with Matt Sherman. Hi, this is Dan. And Tom. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Your spy movie agents bringing you the best coverage of spy movies in the world for almost five years. Our goal is to enhance your viewing experiences. Okay, let's go. So let's talk about the Diamonds Are Forever scenes from Las Vegas. There's much to see here from this movie and when you visit Vegas. This is an interesting place to visit for filming locations as Las Vegas is constantly changing. Aside from a few of the locations, especially on the Las Vegas Strip, buildings have been replaced. All right, yeah, Dan. In fact, one key building that James Bond stayed in, the Tropicana Hotel, yeah. is going to be demolished to put in a baseball stadium. And once this is gone, most of the old school Las Vegas Strip hotels are going to be gone. Anyways, the news about this made me realize we never did an episode on the filming locations in Las Vegas. I took Matt Sherman's excellent tour, the all time high tour in 2021. And he took us to Las Vegas for these Diamonds Are Forever locations. And we also went to Utah to see some of the places they filmed Octopussy. Hey, that's terrific time. All right, so we thought, what's the best way to talk about this? Well, it's to bring Matt Sherman back on the show to help us out. Matt runs BondFanEvents.com. Welcome back, Matt. Thank you so much, Tom and Dan. I'm delighted to be here, that's for sure. You guys are doing so much for the fan community. You're always posting fantastic Bond and Spy locations and interviews, and I appreciate what you do. Uh, uh, thanks, Matt. Always fun to hang with you. Good absolutely. Stuff. Right back at you. We got to go again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, when... We did this tour. We went to both Utah for the octopusy stuff and we did the diamond stuff. And we actually did most of the Utah stuff first. But I think today let's keep on Diamonds Are Forever and let's talk about some of the places there. Now, obviously, there's the big places like the Slumber Inc. Funeral Home and the Tropicana Hotel and Casino and the White House. These movie features are real places in Las Vegas with different names, except for the Tropicana. So I was thinking, let's go through these in the order they appear in the movie. Sure. Right. So, I mean, the first place I think we need to start is when Wint and Kidd are in the desert and they kill Dr. Tynan. And this is an area, it's desert area, north of Las Vegas. And it's the population comes right up to right before where they filmed this thing. Now, Matt, what I want you to tell me is, how the heck did you find this place? <laughs> I, in anticipation of talking with you guys today, I was thinking about Las Vegas and realized I'd been there multiple times and on six different occasions to go to Bond locations. That was part of the family vacation or leading a group around. And Wint and Kid are supposed to be in South Africa in the opening of Diamonds Are Forever. Right. I assumed it was near Las Vegas. I talk to Bruce Glover, Mr. Wint, every so often. He's done a couple of events with Janine Sherman and me with Bond fan events. Yeah. But I'd rather find a location of my own and then call him up and say, hey, I know you were here at Tula <laughs> Springs Recreational Area, right. whatever. So I had really actually given up on finding Wint and Kid. The long story short is I did one more Google Maps, fly into the sky, saw a mountain curve, that I had seen getting glossy eyed looking at these images and screenshots for a million years. <laughs> I mean, I, no, no exaggeration. I probably looked for South Africa for like 20 hours. Wow. Just Google maps because now, now of course, Google maps are usually from the road. And so right. if you're going to a mountainous region, right, mm -hmm. it's blurry. So I triangulated, I found it. I did some more work for a couple more hours. I screamed at my wife, Janine, come on over here. This is exciting. <laughs> we went in person before we ever took a group. We pounded this, the flats for a couple of hours. And Greg Van Cott, who you know from All Time High, The Adventure, he's even been there recently, kind of following up on what we did because the Tula Springs National Recreation Area is a famous place that used to be underwater Okay, and has... Uh, woolly mammoth skeletons and panther skeletons and so he went further afield than even we did in the group looking for things like what's that big triangular rock that's next to dr tyner when he pulls a motorcycle but long story short is it was serendipitous and it was one of those things i looked for for two hours at a time for days on end wow <laughs> yeah because this amazing. one and then i'm going to talk about another one that Wait. again was a desert scene it's like how the hell did you find that I mean, well, it's because... not how I found it. It's why did I find it? What is wrong with me? <laughs> and we're, again, we're I went back fans. recently. We're Bond fans. We're nuts. We're Bond fans. We're nuts. We're spy fans. We're nuts. We're always doing Movie Bond location spy location stuff. Is cool. 
<laughs> I don't know how many y'all have been to, but I did an update or a, uh, an audit, like really quickly looking at Jamaica. I did a tour there, looking at Mexico, whatever. And I go, Janine, you and I, sometimes more me so than you, but we've been to a thousand James Bond book wow. and film locations, a thousand wow. in wow. five continents, 17 or 18 countries. What's That's wrong impressive. with us? <laughs> and uh, we had a good time. It's a good excuse to travel. It's and it is a good time. There's something travel. special about being on the same location as a major motion picture like Bond and the filming locations. I mean, it's just a thrill. It's fun. <laughs> okay. Super thrill. You set the scene and you know there's hundreds of people there, media and crew, not just James Bond. And you get to really see a city. And in yeah. Las Vegas, the, the hook was, you know, there's 25 James Bond locations, not five or six. How do you dig them all out? And it mm -hmm. took a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You found this place. We've got this landscape. You can see here from this landscape, we talked about the fact that it's a desert landscape. How do you find it? It's north of Vegas. And you can see that Point and Kid walk off holding hand in hand. And so here yeah. we have a picture of two of the people who were on our tour walking hand in hand into the, de into the desert. Yeah, but yeah. So if you're, when they do you're that, watching this on our YouTube channel, you're seeing this. Okay. And when they do that, take a note of the background. And look at yeah. how the landscape is identical in both of them. Granted, they're zoomed in differently, but that's really one of the key things you find, Matt, when you find these things is you look at that landscape, right? That's right. You're, you're looking at mountains. You're looking at foreshortening because the camera makes distant objects appear much closer to give uh, texture to the yeah. scene, like a painting. And we triangulate from all points. So it's in that picture, you're looking at the mountain, say, to the west, right? Mm -hmm. And the high peak was hard to find because it's actually in Arizona, not Nevada, where I mm -hmm. started looking. And to the southwest, there are the edges of what we would call the Red Rock Canyon recreational area. You can't see it through the houses. So again, it was going up into space, looking at Google Maps, triangulating. Yeah. And I found it, and serendipitously, another fan found it, and he disagreed with my exact location, but we were on the same line. Okay. On the same you know, longitude line. So we, it was like confirmation. Yeah, you were both we, in, was, yeah. in about yeah. exact. And you're, yeah, I think you're like a block apart or something, two blocks apart, I think. A little bit more, but the, the cool thing about Greg surveying the area, he's a big fan, a big Dumbs and Forever fan, was understanding the local landscape and the greenery has changed and now it changes in a desert and yada, yada, yada. And it's just yeah. a cool place. And when you go there and you touch the tula, they crumble apart under your hands. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can try to bring part of it home, but it's going to become <laughs> a bag of dust. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's I just I just wanted to run naked through the forest and be stung by a scorpion. I just wanted to do that. And for me, <laughs> thank you for not doing that note, while we were there. <laughs> that would have really killed the tour. But on a <laughs> serious note, it's so cool because you're standing there and you love the Vegas scene and you're in this cool spot that looks like the moon, but you're also in South Africa, which is a longer trip. And it, it's just so cool. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing finding a filming location in a desert. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> and the fact that they use, okay, here's this desert. Nobody will know that's not really where we're supposed to be. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. Correct. All right. All right. So let's jump to something that's probably a little more f easier to figure out. And that is the airports. So after that scene, we have to jump forward until James Bond arrives in America. And the airport he lands at is actually LAX, Los Angeles Airport. You can tell that because of the control tower thing that kind of looks yeah. like Stromberg's uh, yeah. lair, right? But one question I have for you, Matt, and because I, I can't remember it, when Bond is talking to Lighter and you see the background, is that LAX or is that part in McCarran? The body with the diamonds, elementary, my dear Dr. Right. Lighter, that's LAX. Okay. And then that's they start to head out to Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so they, you want they to sit drive... in the front, Mr. Franks. It's yeah. much more wide in the front, Mr. Franks. That's yeah, so, all LAX. Okay, so that's all LAX. We see McCarran later in the movie, right? So that's we're right. in we're at LAX. They get into the car. They start driving. It's about a four to four and a half hour drive from LAX to Vegas, right? And yes. so we know that they drove to Vegas instead of flew into Vegas because they passed that sign that says "Welcome to Nevada." Now, this is another one of these locations that you found that just blows my <laughs> mind. Right? Okay, so we're, we're driving away from Vegas towards LA. And Matt says, okay, we're going to pull over right here. We're on the side of this road. We're like, what the hell is here? And we can see, you see the shot when the car's driving Bond into Vegas. 
you see the sign for Welcome to Las Vegas. We're actually we're actually standing there and we had to go up a hill and walk up a hill a little bit. And it's like, this is exactly where the camera had to be to get this shot. And again, this is south of Las Vegas. Uh, is it Highway 10? It's, yeah, it's south and west towards the closest California border. Yeah. And exciting. And, and you know, as a sidebar, Dan, we said, hey, I'm going to take you to California right now. Yeah. We're in Nevada and <laughs> Las Vegas. And so we crossed the line and got yeah. to stand and straddle the two states with our feet and do all that fun stuff. But you see the genius in it. And just like the Fleming locations, you're always trying to deduct why this location, why this place. And there's that hill on the southbound side of the highway where the car's going by at 85 right. miles an hour. And that's where the camera would have made a great placement. There's no helicopter. So when they shoot down to the sign, welcome to Nevada, and they shoot down to Bonds Hearst, they are on a hill. And it was very convenient and it worked out perfectly. And then me being me and you being you, I, I go, stand 10 feet over here, now five feet over here, now two <laughs> feet over here, because you want the telephone poles and the mountains to line up. Because yeah. if you're going to go all the way to a dangerous highway, yeah. the traffic, you have to stand exactly where the camera was. I'm yeah. with you on that, man. I'm yeah, with absolutely. you on that. I love absolutely. that. We want to be on the yeah. spot. <laughs> on so, the spot. So if you go to Vegas and try to find this place, First, good mm. luck, <laughs> because you know, it's, I mean, literally, we're we're flying down the highway, and it's like, okay, we're going to turn over here on the side of the road. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, All I right. didn't know where it was, but then I just recognized it. No, I'm kidding. But what we want to <laughs> do is, you know, when fans are enjoying the cast, if they would subscribe and talk back and send comments and say they want us to take them there, the three of us will take them there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's not as fun alone or even with one good buddy as it is with a group. And I would love to sure. have a group there. And believe it or not, this very week, I was talking with four or five guys about getting together in Vegas just to do the sites again. And it didn't work out for this year, but I'd love to do it next year. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. so we've been to the desert in a kind of an esoteric, kind of hard to find place. Then we go to another place, and we went to the airport. Easy to tell where LAX is. Another easy to find place is the funeral home, kind of. <laughs> it's not really one location of the funeral home, <laughs> right? So the hearse pulls into the Slumber Inc. funeral home for us there, and that's where the mausoleum is. That's where Bond is going to exchange the diamonds for the money. But the cool thing for me here is this is an area that has really, really changed since this movie was filmed. But the funeral home looks the same or pretty darn close. <laughs> and so that was kind of cool. So, you know, we turn, you know, we're, we're driving on the highway and we turn in and there's the, the peak for the, for the funeral home. And so it's, it's really, really cool because it's not as isolated as it was in the movie. And this is the Palm Boulder Highway Mortuary and Cemetery. If I've got the name right. Do I have the name of that right, Matt? That's right. Palm Mortuary is a chain. And so back in the day when the internet was starting to break out, a number of sites, including fan sites, had the location wrong. And back when they were filming in 71, as you said, the funeral home is, is in mausoleum. It's on a desert. It's on a nothing. And now it's overlooking Henderson in the back where there's 500,000 people in homes. And when Tom Agwix, the screenwriter, was a guest at our event for four hours, we never asked him about the Garden of Remembrance. He was blowing us away with all these cool stories about his four Bond films and Superman and Superman 2 and blah, blah, blah. But when you go to the exteriors, which you said, Paul Mortuary, and you go to the back of the mausoleum, there's a plaque, and it is literally the Garden of Remembrance. Right. Just like Bond is told, your brother is out by the Garden of Remembrance. And it's just such a great scene yep. right and then we always want to add to the location so we not only go to the mausoleum which is the exteriors but we stand on the side of the road hit our hitch our pants leg up like sean connery in the publicity <laughs> shot <laughs> waiting for the motorcycle yep. yeah so paul mortuary is exteriors and then a different one is something else yeah yeah well and so there is the and i i don't know the if muslim's the right word with the thing where the the wall where they have the crypts where the they put the remains in and there's one there in this we, by the Garden of Remembrance that you're talking about. And I'm thinking, this looks different than the movie. And why is that, right. Matt? Yeah. Well, well, full disclosure, like Janine and I have been doing fan tours since 1998. So in 99, I took a group to the exterior location and I go, yeah, it was someone around here. 
And there's 30 of us going, this doesn't look like the movie. They must have <laughs> yeah. refaced it. They must have. And I'd already been in there with co-host Alan Stevenson. And we met with a mortuary director. And then he gave us a tour and talked to us about burial types. It was very surreal. It was very yeah, yeah. shady tree. The interiors were done at the Paul Mortuary downtown near the okay. Las Vegas Fremont Street area, as you know, because we were there. Right. And the interiors now look like the film because they did one mortuary for the exteriors and one for the interiors. Yep. So it's the same chain, but just two different locations. And we did it's like a, McDonald's. Yeah. It's yeah, like we, McDonald's of death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> McDonald's oh. of death. Wow. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll be a sponsor now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, people are dying to make this sponsorship. Please. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so so we actually did an episode, Diamonds Are Forever Filming Location Revealed with Matt Sherman, yeah. where we talked about how what people had historically thought was the actual crypt that Bond puts the urn in and pulls the money out, how that actually was the wrong location because of some expansion they had done at the mortuary. And so if you want to if you want to watch that episode or listen to that episode you'll get an idea of what we're talking about there. Yeah, check out that film on our YouTube channel, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. It's a great one. It's been a popular one. Yep, and this is a fairly popular fan site because it's easy to find. The only thing I would tell you is remember, this is a working mortuary. Yeah. And you can get there when somebody's having a service and grieving all the loss of, of someone. And so just... Be cool, right? Yeah. Be cool. And if you lie down because you're trying to pose like Connery unconscious, you may never leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't overdo it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we, we have this, the, the two scenes at the, the, the scenes at the different mortuaries, even though it looks like it's the same place. And Bond tells uh, Slumber and Shady Tree, I hear the Tropicana is quite comfortable. So we're now going to move to the Tropicana Hotel. And that's where he's sitting in that round tub. He's got the the Vegas Now or whatever it was magazine with Sammy Davis yes. Jr. on the cover. And so it's a very short scene, but this scene is bumps me out because it's supposed to be the trot, right? And that hotel's going away yeah. for a baseball stadium. Yes. Oh, a lot of Vegas history and some pretty good history from Bond is coming down with that. Yeah, so we went, we went over there, going. Matt, and we went up to a specific room. Do you remember that room and why we went up there? Room 831 is found yeah. in the script. So we like to go to 831. And then whoever's staying in 831 loves it when we knock on the door and ask to take pictures of the inside of the room, <laughs> no matter what's going on in the room. And again, <laughs> Greg, Van Cott, Greg Van Cott is so eagle-eyed, and he was just there this week in anticipation of the demolished Tropicana building and he noticed that there's a stairwell very conveniently there so that if they used it or were planning to use it Connery could quietly come up and down the stairs and not be disturbed from his trailer and the trop is that great scene that you're talking about where the main floor is mostly not computer games and live dealers and there's great shows and a beautiful Tiffany glass ceiling and so our group will sit at the lounge for three hours smoke cigars have a drink and talk bond and spies it's yeah, and I love it. it's got that low it's got a low ceiling for a casino, so it's got a different yeah. feel. So you can tell when you're seeing it in the movie. Yeah. So and all that orange juice. I mean, yeah. endless orange juice from the Tropicana, <laughs> typically. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. Full of jokes today. I'm in the Diamonds Are Forever mood. I love there, Diamonds there, Forever. There it's always go. in my top films, but it's just a funny film, quote Yeah, film. it is a funny film. Yeah, it is. All right. So so then Bond, he's when he's looking at that magazine, he sees an ad that Shady Tree is performing at the white house mm -hmm. right Ooh, and so he's gonna tree. and so he's right. gonna go Dort to the white house act. yeah he's gonna go to the white house to see this act now this hotel has a pretty interesting history so why don't you talk through the history of the hotel a little bit and the, the filming of it and stuff yeah i mean this could be a reveal episode okay when right. Bond is walking in the so-called white house fans know it's the now westgate and westgate resorts Right. Mm -hmm. And we brought Lana Wood there in 99 to do the event with us. And she wasn't a big Vegas fan. She hadn't been there since filming in 71. So we bring her up to this hotel, this big white hotel where Elvis had headlined for years. 
And she walks up and she goes, this is a nice hotel, fellas, but I didn't do my scenes at the Hilton. I did my scenes at the International. And 30 Bond fans go, Lana, this is the International. It's now the Hilton. <laughs> now the Westgate, the beautiful Willard White exteriors. Yep. Uh, most fans know about the fake top of the building, right? Because they literally drew on each frame. They didn't have CGI and they made the White House appear taller. Yep. But when Bond is strolling in the White House and he sees some beautiful women dancing, it's the Dunes. That was That's the Dunes. Dunes La Rev show, which was choreographed by my friend Pat Gill, who was Shady Tree's Blonde Acorn. And we and met he's her. also walking. Okay. We met her on the tour and we had a whole to do with her. I just talked to her this week. She's a lovely lady. She was one of the most famous people in Las Vegas before she was cast for that brief scene. And she was great. Oh. And so you have the Dunes. You have the Westgate. He's now in the Riviera. And then when he's playing craps with Plenty O'Toole, they're at the Riviera. And then she gets thrown out the window of the Westgate. She flies through the air past another hotel and lands in a third <laughs> hotel swimming pool. For that, you're going to have to tour with me because it took me like 20 years to figure this stuff out. But Lana Wood was told, it took me 20 years to figure out some of these things that they're walking by the dunes and they're playing in the Riviera. And she goes out the window of the Westgate and flies past another hotel, lands in a third pool, as you know from the tour. But Lana Wood was told at the time, listen, you're not that happy about jumping off a high dive board into a pool. And you're not that happy about doing it in your brown panties. That was a whole discussion. And then some. Yeah. Mm. So don't worry, Lana. We'll film you at two in the morning. No one will be there. She steps on this board at two in the morning. There's 200 press taking photos and hundreds of docking <laughs> fans. And so a stunt woman goes out one window of the actual Westgate. If you look at the windows very closely on the screen, it's the Westgate. And then she lands in another pool elsewhere in Vegas. And then we're hoping to find her body sometime. <laughs> because when she drowns, that's uh, actually Kirk Douglas's former home in um, Palm Springs, Palm Nevada. Springs. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Where wow. they go out and we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You, you already mentioned that Pat Gill was one of the acorns and we got, and you had us meet her, which was awesome. It was great to have dinner with her. Now, we also had a guy on the tour who booked a particular room at the Westgate for us to go ahead and uh, take a look at. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Scott and Ken are fans who are, Scott Rosankovich is perennially at these events and he's just into the max and he loves it. He's a great fan, a great, sweet guy. And he made sure not just to stay at the Westgate on a high floor, like Elvis would stay mm -hmm. in residence. I mean, he was right there in the middle of, the, of that arc building. But he made sure our whole group could go up there and enjoy the view, which I had never done. I mean, you'd think I would have done it, but I, I, we went up and I'm shooting photos out the window of the scene and I'm looking at the other locations from Diamonds of Forever. It was fabulous. It was great. Yeah, and so awesome. we, we appreciate when the fans chip in, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really cool because you really got, it felt like you were there you know just seeing it from the, you know from that room and taking a look and seeing here's the side of the building and stuff that you know and we were of... there because we were there because one thing i'd hoped to do that i did at that time which we did i turned a little bit and now i have the background behind blofeld when he's ensconced on the top floor as willard white slash howard hughes in other yep. words even when I'm watching him in a set and you think, oh, this is a Ken Adams set. It's a gorgeous set, right? The top yeah, floor yeah. of the White House. Oh, yeah. There's mountains behind him. And I go, those look like Vegas mountains. And I went into the sky and Google Maps and I thought about it for, you know, four or five hours. And it's the view from the Westgate. Nice. But we didn't have to pay hundreds of dollars a night because Scott and Ken were hosting us there. And then we go to the lobby and we see the fabulous Terry O'Neill photos yep. of Bond at the gas station, Sean Connery yep. there with Jill St. John. You know, it's a whole scene. It's a, it's a whole scene and everyone wants to go to the White House. Yeah, yeah. I love the pictures they have in, in, in that hotel just to kind of get you to this was old Vegas, even yeah. though oh, we're yeah. a new version. It's, it's very cool. All right. Yeah. So, so they lead that we after, after uh, Plenty O'Toole. Has her her? I didn't know there was a pool down there, which is probably my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite Bond lines. Exceptionally fine shot. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so then the movie shifts to another hotel, which is still there, Circus Circus. And now this is one that they're they're supposed to be doing another big renovation of the interior. So I'll be interested to see how they they do that. But the water race is there still. That balloon game. It's not yeah. there anymore. No, I'm nodding my oh. head going, I can't believe it's still there. I had a friend go there recently and take a picture. It's still the same. Yeah. Wow. So That's it's cool. still there, but I know they're going to do another renovation. So who knows? But that whole scene that you have with Tiffany and the kid, uh, is it, was it Brian Dugan? Was that his name? Uh, Gary. Oh, Dugan. blow it up your pants. 
Yeah, that kid. <laughs> that scene, you can go, and we actually were able to play the water balloon game at Circus Circus. And like you said, you can still do that today. Yeah, so if you cool. want to kind of immerse yourself and kind of play act yeah. at something that was really done in the movie, it's there. You've got the ability to go ahead and do that, which is the same so cool. clown heads. Yeah. The same clown heads. I spent an inordinate amount of time on eBay looking for that giant green dog. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would have been great on the shelf, right? And yeah. after the first four or 500 green dogs on eBay, the second time of that, I gave up. But the, <laughs> the clown heads and the guns, everything's the same. And so you have these groups over the years that go and everyone's staying like this with a water pistol. And it's so much fun. Yes. And yeah. and it's the it's the reach and the arc of Bond. If you remember the call in the in the show, ladies and gentlemen, the flying Palacios. Yep. The <laughs> Barker on the floor, who was a real position, a real person for decades, because they would do the show all the time and mm -hmm. still did into recent years, was Jay Sarno, who had founded Circus Circus and said, if you're filming in my casino, I'll be in the film. He's the Barker. Mm -hmm. But that same Barker's job was held by other famous people through the years, but the flying Palacios would go all over the world for two decades after. And everywhere people go, we know the flying Palacios. They'd be in <laughs> Poland doing a show. They go, how do you know us? They go, diamonds are forever. Diamonds are forever. I'm serious. It's yeah, the yeah, reach of this yeah. franchise. Yep, absolutely. So we had a great time at the water balloons. And I think, Tom, you shot your gun on my clothes, right? I was wearing silk I think and I, I might have my tie. Yeah, I think I might have. Yeah, that I sounds like something pants. I would do. Yeah, it'd be something I would do. <laughs> But they also still had the trapeze there up there when we were there. I didn't see anybody on oh, it. Oh, yes. They and the very a... track, if you remember, yeah. you can look in the ceiling now until the renovation and see the track in the ceiling where the famous showgirls and dancers would, would go past and they go past Bond and Lighter in the film. Yeah. Because that track is still there. And it's it's tremendous. And Circus Circus was an unusual place and the only non-Howard Hughes property that they used for the film. Yeah. Well, it was it's really cool and it's still there. It's just, yeah. it's amazing. It's, it's still there. The cool part that it's still there. <laughs> but it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So then you, you alluded to this. Plenty O'Toole gets thrown into the pool and magically she's in the pool and it's really in California. And so. Yeah, all um, over the place. Long have, trial. So you have that house there and you said that well, it was Kirk Douglas's house, right? And then. Kirk Douglas's house. And then you've got the Alrod house, which is what was supposed to, that, that thing with all the turns in it, that was where we met. Thumper and Bambi, and that house is under big reconstruction again, and you just can't get into it right now. You're, you're not going to get into that house. So going there is probably not a good side a side trip. I think a yeah, better yeah. side we, trip is what we did up in Utah, because first it's closer. I think so. Yeah. Everything's open because it's outside. <laughs> we had a yeah. nice, uh, nice chat with Trina Parks, uh, who played Thumper. She was fun. Yep, great, she was great, fun. great to talk to great lady. Yeah, that was okay. a great chat. That was a great chat. Yeah, the Elrod House is a gated community, mm -hmm. and sometimes it would rent out for film and television, but it would, the rental was like 8000 a night. And I said, instead, let's go to Utah, see 13 Octopussy locations yeah. instead of two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a better idea. <laughs> Good. I'm okay. glad you liked it. Yeah, I did. Well, plus for me, I live in Chicago, and everything's flat. When you're in downtown right. Vegas, everything's flat. So when you right. get out of downtown Vegas and the Strip, that things stopped getting flat. So that was that was really cool. It see. was awesome. I'm here in uh, hilly downtown Florida. I'm at an <laughs> elevation of 100 feet of sea level. Yeah. So, wow. And, and if you go a mile, it's still 100 feet above sea level. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. So then the next scene that we see in Vegas is at McCarran Airport. And boy, does that look different now. My God, is that airport exploded. I mean, it's like, when you, when I don't think you say exploded at the airports. Come on. Well, okay. That might be the, that might have been a poor choice. Bursting at the seams. It has gotten a lot larger. There you go. All right. right. Now, I think right. they, they, I did not understand one of the shots in the movie. When I was looking at this again last night, and when they back the Mach 1 out of the parking spaces, they're going to follow Mets. Yeah, yeah. You right. see a sign for the Frontier Hotel. Well, Frontier Hotel, unless, you know, this was old McCarran, so maybe the terminal was further north than it is now. But the Frontier Hotel wouldn't be where they were backing out. Right. You are correct. You are absolutely correct. I triangulated the mountains so that when we were on the airport or at the fence bordering the airport, yeah. we can get the same background because the terminal and the baggage lockers are all different and the famous oxygen breathing yeah. for a dollar that Ian Fleming liked. And 
what happened was I've, I've worked closely with another friend who may even be a bigger devotee of the movie than me. And the frontier had an outside. They had a real vibrant sign to advertise across town. Okay. And so he's documented every hotel that appears even briefly in the film and collects casino chips from all the hotels. It's like 25 hotels okay. of old Vegas. So, so yeah, uh, there's a frontier bit and then there's another place where you can kind of see an Elvis sign for the Hilton and all this fun stuff. So the, so the frontier stuff. sign we see with the billboard for Wayne Newton is really just like a billboard for the hotel down yes. the road. And okay. tricks us into going, where's the camera? Because Matt said, hey, we're looking northwest yes. here to get the mountains. Yeah. 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 So that was you know, southwest. Again, and again, as you're doing this stuff and you're looking for these different scenes and you look at the scenes like, where the heck is this? This doesn't feel right. And it's because it's. Oh, you know, man. And, 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 you know, that's true. And, and I don't know if we talked about this on site, but the other thing was that, that the director, who I love all his Bond films, but Guy Hamilton, uh, John Glenn did this too. They have an affinity for diagonal shots. And what I mean by that is if you were in a north, south, east, west straight configuration and you have a car parked with Bond in it, mm -hmm. he would never just shoot through the car. He would turn the camera diagonally. And so like some of these scenes where I want to know where the eight different camera angles were so you can storyboard it and do everything and take all the photos. It takes like three hours to work out. I know that sounds silly, but I'm sitting here like, uh, that hotel was the Stardust. I was there before they demolished it, but what's that hotel? And then I spend an hour on the internet trying to figure out what that hotel was from that little yeah. green logo. And and you work at all these shots and they would turn the cameras diagonally and and and, and make turns look interesting and car chase look interesting while reutilizing the same street over and over again. Yeah. So sometimes you and I, or the three of us rather, we catch Eon and we know that there's a scene filmed this way, like yeah. Dr. No, they're playing bridge. And if you literally spin the camera around, you get another Dr. No scene that you would have never known was there. Because yeah, we're going to we're, we're gonna talk about that with Octopussy. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's the same with the, with the Mach 1 chase down mm -hmm. the main strip, right? They kept using the same kind of footage over and over again in the same I put my story I put my story about up here for you but it would break the internet because <laughs> I counted up I was lettering things a through and yeah. it was almost z there's 22 different turns they do in this two yeah. block area they spin out and you're like if bond's trying to get away why does a u turn and go down the yeah, same street exactly. again ha 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 <laughs> That's, a, that's, a, that's that, a great story. That's a great story. By the way, the Mach 1, the car used in this stuff we're talking about here, is owned by the Ian Fleming Foundation, and they're restoring it right now. And Tom and I got to see that car in person, and it's fantastic. The Ian Fleming Foundation does a terrific job with finding movie-used props and materials from the Bond movies, restoring them and loaning them out. When Tom and I were there, we were invited once for their work weekend and they were working on yeah a 22 foot section of the goldfinger plane <laughs> <laughs> oh my god very cool after they leave the airport and we have this issue with the frontier sign yeah they stop off at a shell gas station because dr metz needs to get some gas right they're following him and this is another thing that has changed but it's still a gas station it's just an arco now and not the shell and it's conveniently right across from the white house or the West Gate now. And so you can go there and if you're if you're sitting there on Elvis Presley Drive, that gas station's right there and you can see the same shot and same view that they had in the movie from the Arco station now. Right? Did they have, did they change the building at all? Yeah, the the building, the what we call the grocery convenience store is the same. The difference is the alley that they do the quick switch in. And the question is, why does Dr. Metz have to stop there for gas? The man's full of gas. He's full of hot air. <laughs> but they, they do this thing there. And it's just so surreal, right? To be there, Tom, with 12 or 15 people. And they're all like, hey, Curly, what about my stamps? <laughs> and then the gas station attendant is just looking at you like, what planet are you from? Yeah, exactly. You and, and then the other thing, too, is now this is a cute story, but, you know, Gary and Steve Oxenrider, these dear fellows, they mm -hmm. run into the convenience store, which they would always do. And they start telling the convenience store manager, hey, did you know Time to Forever is filmed with Sean Connery starring director Guy Hamilton, 1971. Blah, 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 blah. And we're like, we got to go. We have a timed appointment. We have to go <laughs> somewhere. And they love to tell people, hey, your Kentucky Fried Chicken was used in yep. cold finger. Like they never exactly. know. They <laughs> never know that the thousands of people who stop at Arco to get gas can get stamps. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you used to, used to do stamps. All right. So, so then Metz drives up into the desert to Tektronix. 
And this yeah. is just an amazing area. And again, it's another where it's like, how did you find that ridge in the desert where this chase is going? So you drive up there and the building, there's, there's a building, isn't that the Papco Gibson building? Is that where that is? Yeah, so you, you go up there and so you can see the structure that's in the movie. But then when he does the buggy chase, you're just out in desert. You know, he leaves the, he leaves the moon, if you will, the, the set for the moon, goes through, crashes through with the moon buggy, and he's just driving around in the desert being chased. And you took us to some spots in that desert that the ridges and even at the low level, the you know, not the stuff way in the back, but the stuff really close to us. It's like, that's where this had to be. And again, that had to take you forever to find. It takes forever just to call the screenshots. So okay. we're talking yeah. about like seven stops on the way to Pabco Gibson. Right. And the first time we took a group or considered it, we had identified a gypsum plant. And I told people, hey, we're going to wear hard hats and we're going to get gypsum samples. And then a week before the event I was looking again. And again, this is very early on the advent of the internet. I go, this is the wrong place. And I had to tell the gypsum plant, you're the wrong gypsum plant, because that was incorrect on the web. It's Pabco Gibson, which is close to the public. But there's like seven stops. And I have to tell you the seven stop which is where the car stops and basically Joe St. John is waiting for Sean Connery. Right. I have something like 42 screenshots and they all in my computer say Southwest, Northwest, North, Northeast. So you can stand in a circle because at home I have one shot for every screenshot, right? right? And then Nate Sears, who's wonderful and helps us with all these locations, mm -hmm. he tracked down a lot of the buggy where he thought it was. And then when we went there, as you know, we were pulling out pieces of paper and looking mm -hmm. at it and screen matching it. So yeah, there's at least like 80 screenshots you can get in this beautiful desert and you can take a rock sample home. And then I hope you finally remember that we're the only group that ever went inside Popco Gibson. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. And that was a story, cool. right? Yes, yep. Yeah, we, we, we did some crazy stuff. <laughs> we, we have fans standing holding a long sheet, Dan, of metal, of scrap metal because they were dismantling the famous dome that's in the yeah. background of the buggy chase. Yep. And okay. we, I mean, this was a big thing for me. This is like my, you know, six tour group, whatever. And we were able to make the schedules work and they were very gracious to us, but we went to, you know, uh, that's cool. a shed, a shed, a van, a, a, yeah. a, a, a large carport. Yep. And it's where Dr. Metz takes his pass and puts it in the van and the van descends. Yeah. And then we stood somewhere else and I'm like, Misha, stand over here. Stuart, stand over here. Tom, get a picture. Yep. Because they're like, why am I here? I'm like, you're about to be run over by a buggy. This is where the gate crashed. So, you know, <laughs> and this is the building and this is this. And you come home and you look at it after these three years and you go, oh my gosh, I have 150, you know, scenes yep. from this film. It was amazing. It was, yeah, it was wonderful. And it won't happen without a group because they, they don't want to hear from an individual. But when you say, hey, I've, I have guys who are great podcasters and webmasters and bloggers and writers and sure, university yeah, professors. Yeah. 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 Very right. cool. Now, another thing that happens there, happen, actually happens later in the movie, but they filmed it there, is when Bond comes out of that pipe and he's resplendent looking at his tuxedo. Ah. And he's just, mm. I was just out walking my rat. I seem to have lost my way. <laughs> That's in that same area. I, yeah, I have my hand on my forehead. Yeah, because that was a rough one, man. That was rough. Yeah. Well, I it's like it's just a spot of dirt. <laughs> and try to figure out just that little spot of dirt where that thing came out of. Sure. I was looking for Winton Kidd yeah. for the umpteenth time, <laughs> unwilling to ask Bruce Glover, who's always like, Matt, how are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I want to tell you about when I discovered Warren Beatty, you know, and he's great. But, but I'm I'm looking literally on Google Maps of highways. And now I'm further afield than the usual suspects and where groups have been and tour groups have been. And I'm screaming, Janine, come over here. And she comes over to the laptop where I'm talking to you now. And I go, you see that little green lump in the background over there? I was looking for Wenton Kid. That's the green lump from the pipe scene when they bury him in the pipe. And long story short is... I have friends and I'm like, you stand there. Nope, two feet more this way, three yeah. feet more this way. What am I doing? I'm where Sean Connery is shown hitting the golf ball when he's working on the pipe scene. Yeah, You're sitting over here where Sean Connery is getting his nails done. You see this little ridge over here? There's an upslope that goes two feet high. That's in the background when he's buried in the pipe. So it's one scene for the burial of the pipe. And it's one scene for him coming out of the pipe, the pipe. Yeah, and then another scene. So it's, but I mean... What I'm excited about is I was finding these places and I had been taking tour groups there to see Diamonds of River for 20 years. 
Yeah. And I'm like, I'm never going to find this. And I wasn't looking for it. But, you yeah, know, yeah, once yeah, you yeah, look at a picture cool. 87 times, you see the little green loop of rock. <laughs> and you guys know what I'm talking about, because this is the lifestyle we've chosen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's talk nightlife. We've talked a little bit about this scene. But one of my favorite parts of the tour was when we went to Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas and where they do that whole car chase that we were talking about. And what I really like about it is it's a fairly confined area, but there are so many different shots that are from the movie. That, and it's so easy to just walk around this thing. I mean, it's Fremont Street between Main and Third Street. So it's, it's not a very long stretch of road you have to go to. You have to go behind Binion's Horseshoe to find the, the parking lot, but it's, you know, it's on Ogden Street right behind it. And right. I mean, in here, there are shots from the Fremont Hotel, Binion's Horseshoe, which used to be my favorite place to play craps in the world, the Four right. Queens, the Golden Nugget, the Pioneer, the Mint, I mean, and then all these little places along the way. And again, it's only like four blocks long. You know, from Main to Third with the, with the cross street in the middle, I forget the name of that one. Right, there's Casino it runs Boulevard. like a grid. Yeah. Right. Casino Center Boulevard, first, second, yeah. third. Right. So it, everything's um, in this this really tight area, which oh yeah. just the, the squealing tires when they're just spinning the car had to be pretty loud. I would think when they actually filmed it. Oh thing. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and 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 your and your fans watching are savvy and they realize when they're watching it, there's crowds standing watching the cars go by. Because yeah. again, they're filming at 2 a.m. But oh, oh it's a Bond film. Let's go watch. Well, it's, it's 2 a.m. Vegas. Weird things. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's like nine eight. And, and, and Guy Hamilton, the director, told yeah. the city, told the mayor, "Yeah, we'll be here. It'll take a day." And they're taking over downtown for five days. And so for me, it's very. I hate to use the word obsessive and compulsive. I would just say certifiable. Like I should be in a straitjacket. But it's like stand over here. Why? That's where the car pulls up, and the sheriff says, "Hey, brother, yeah. and stand over here. Why? Because you're getting run over. This is where the Ford Mustang goes on the sidewalk, right mm -hmm. here, even yep. though the building has changed in 60 years, because I yep. sit there and I try to get it down to the foot. Yep. And yeah. we were the first group that said, look, the parking lot is not a figment of imagination in Universal City. And what started me on that was I see the big neon sign yep. in the scene. I go, it has to be Vegas. So we went to the parking lot where they did, but it was something like 22 or 23 different camera angles, turns. And what yeah. makes it very difficult is when the sheriffs are in the car and Bond and Jill St. John are in the car, they are on a green screen, but the camera is reversed. Okay. So they're driving, they're supposed to be fleeing east, but they're driving Driving west. west. Okay. And it's going by like this. So you have to slow down every frame of the DVD. And, and so I have a storyboard of it and it looks like a bowl of spaghetti of what they're doing. <laughs> and they made it very exciting. And at the time, for those who remember, the audiences were enthralled. That was the high piece of the film. Tom Mankiewicz said, what did I do? I broke Cubby's rule about making the film bigger and bigger and bigger into the end. Because mm -hmm. the highlight of the film for stunts was the car chase. Right. And people yeah. had never seen this. And so Dan, Tom, and I were there and we're walking around. And I'm like, this alley, the two wheels, they go in. But right. this alley, the two wheels, they come out. Right. Right. And this way they do this and this way they do this. And the only thing that was California was to flip the car and solve the continuity of the car changing on two wheels. Yeah. But it's exciting and it's glamorous. And me being me, I'm going to take you along the way and go, that's Casino. And that's Goodfellas. And that's this. And, and, yeah. and you want to and get the, some of its parts and you want to eat there and play there and take the zip line there and have fun. Yeah. And, and that's a highlight for everybody. That's old Vegas. Yeah, it's old Vegas now. They... To me, they kind of ruined it when they made the Fremont Street experience with all the lights and stuff. Right. But the cool thing about it for the Bond fan is at street level, you're looking at these hotels and it's pretty darn similar to what was Very the similar. way it looked back then. So that's yeah. really, really cool. And yeah, we're not, uh, yeah. You know, I used to stay on the strip when I go out to Vegas and I'd go and spend at least one night down in Fremont and go into Binion's and have a good time. It's a good part of Vegas. And they had the best $2.99 egg and bacon buffets. Can't and I wasn't happy about the covering with the Fremont Street yeah. experience, but Janine and I went there for the first time and they were playing Vic Flick's Bond theme. Mm -hmm. And I called up Vic, who was feeling sad about something. I said, Vic, you were just on the world's largest soundstage because it's technically the yeah. biggest speaker set in the planet Earth. And there you were, just like you're in the <laughs> London Olympiad with a billion people listening to your guitar theme, you know? Oh, man, That's a awesome. billion people. You know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You got to right, make so, the most of these things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So then the movie goes back out to California and we already talked about the Elrod house with Bump, Thumper and Bambi in it. And 
then the last shot we really see in Vegas in the movie is when Tiffany gets in the car and Blofeld's there in drag petting the white cat. And then they leave Vegas and go off. And that's pretty much it. And what is that scene at the Westgate? Because then they go off and film stuff in, inside stuff that you're not seeing. Am I right on that? Or did I miss Yeah, it? yeah. And of course, as you know from coming on tour with me, I'm also going to take you to Ian Fleming's Tiara Hotel from yep. the novel. Yep. and thrilling cities and you know my yep. my vegas thing has 50 pins in it right yeah but yeah they leave from the white house which is a real drag ha 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 ha, ha <laughs> when blofeld comes out yeah and i love charles gray in that film and they shoot inside there and one of the hooks is you can tell which casino they're in by looking at you ready for this which you probably already figured this out but the carpet so if you look at the carpet in the scenes yep. or in still shots and again, so frustrating because the camera, the camera wants to look at actors, right. but I want to look at casino plaques and carpets <laughs> and ashtrays, yep. right? So like when Bond puts out his cigarette and you go, oh, that's a set. That's so funny because on his lap, when Jill St. John puts out the cigarette, it's clearly a green 1971 Tropicana ashtray. <laughs> you can get them on eBay. So, you know, is it the Tropicana? Isn't it? It's part of the, part of the mythos, part of the fun, right? Yep. But Diamonds is a great film because you can go to most of it. And yep. there's still people on the web saying, well, long story short is I have friends who think they they were doing the mine scenes where they're mining in South mm -hmm. Africa, also in Vegas in the tunnels. But there are something like eight or 10 miles of tunnels in the area that you can go to near Hoover Dam, near Boulder Dam. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a while. Yeah, well, we'll okay. get there. We'll find it. <laughs> All right. So we didn't go to California. We went the other way and went up to Utah. Right. And, and I had no idea that they had done any octopusy filming there. And because I hadn't, I hadn't really gotten into Octopussy at that point. And uh, this is just some of the most beautiful country. And it's also where we find in the movie, the gas station that, that Roger Moore pulls up into. He's, he's in that Acro, what is it, Acrostar BD5J with the wings up. And he says, fill her up. Now, that location technically exists. Roger Moore wasn't there. But I'm going to tell you it's in Santa Clara, Utah. I'm not going to tell you where. Yeah. This one took some great sleuthing to figure out. Right? I think Nate helped you with this one, right? Nate Sears? Nate, Nate Sears found the location, and I got a scenario photo. And then I still am going to go in and, and move things around by 50, 60 yards and find mm -hmm. some things. And where did the plane come? And there was yeah. a near accident at the scene where crew people were almost killed, which we talked about. And yeah. Yeah, and, and John Glenn was going to cut that from the film. Really? And he walked into a preview audience just to see, and they died at it. They were laughing so hard. And I remember watching the trailer in the films, and everyone's laughing. And I actually have a location memory about these Utah scenes. I remember being a kid, this is long before I'm doing some tour, and thinking, India, Argentina, I'll never go there. Man, I sure like to... Man, I wish I'd go that cliff where him and octopus are hanging off the <laughs> and so so where they filmed the BD Jet Landing was a mix and taking off a mix of England. Mm -hmm. And they used three different military airfields in Octopussy, right? And Utah. And if you had told me years ago, Matt, you're gonna go to Southwest Remote Utah four times <laughs> to look at bond locations, but I love it. And like you said, it's some of the most beautiful scenery in the world for sure. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous mountains. And you see the you yeah. see the you see where the jet was flying. You just again you look at the mountains, you can kind of yeah. see the paths it was flying. But this gas station, you took us up on a hill. And it's one yeah. of the things if you're looking at scenes like this, get high. Right? Because if you can get high, you get not like that. You can <laughs> I don't know if Utah likes you. Vegas uh... can, but I don't know about Utah. But but get elevated yeah. and yeah. look down on something. And you had us do that with this location, which was really eye-opening for me, being that's able great. to see this from the top, because right, it's an apartment complex now. That, yeah, that's great. And we, we marked it because from high up, we could see the length of the run yeah. because the jet didn't go 20 feet. It went, it's yeah. landing. It's, it's, we, we marked the whole half a mile. Because, yeah. you know, like I'll go to Rome and I'll say, Janine, we're walking the two miles they use for this 50 second shot at 80 miles an hour. And we marked the whole thing. And it's, it's great. And something you could do there that's very hard to do, another place we went to, right, is I go take a look 
you're seeing the opening of Octopussy and the closing in one photo. We can yep. all stand like this. Yep. And you're seeing Argentina and India in one yep. shot because it's stunning mountains, <laughs> yes. stunning hiking and wild desert. And then it's kind yeah, of a yeah, fundamentalist, yeah. fundamentalist Mormon community. So like when you go to the Walmart there, the women are very modestly dressed and they'll have mm -hmm. archaic looking dresses on. They look like they're from the 1700s, like Quakers. Mm -hmm. It's a, but very friendly, very, mm -hmm. very cool place. Very cool trip. And I have to tell you, I thought, is that going to be a good group trip? And what happened was people on the web with two or three octopusy locations, I'm like, these are not correct. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Or, oh, they had a helicopter. That's how they did this. I'm like, no, they didn't have a helicopter. You don't hear one in the film. Right. The camera isn't jiggling. It must be some hell. And then it was several trips like with Janine, where we spent mm -hmm. a whole day and we spent like three hours looking for one camera scene for two seconds in the film. And then, to... and after a while, I said to Janine, this is amazing. She goes, what? I go, I found all 13 locations from the 13 Eon film. So we're going to go see 13 octopusy locations. Nice. One of them is pretty easy to find, and that's sure. the bridge that they fly the jet under. Right. So there's right. all these different scenes of the jet there, yeah, and it's the scene. Hurricane Leverkin Bridge. And you took us there, and you could you could kind of hike around this thing, and you could kind of you guys were kind of like hanging on to it a little bit, and you know going down yes. right alongside of it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't have that kind of coordination. <laughs> but if you want to, and you have that kind of skill, go for it. There's nothing better than being with a Bond friend under the Hurricane Leverkin Bridge. And, you know, as a kid watching the film, it looks like a thousand foot high gorge and it's not. Wow. But I don't know if I should say this on the cast, but we want to do a reveal, right? So the first time I'm there is because we're taking the kids to Zion National Park, which is stunning for miles of hiking. And I'm looking at MapQuest or whatever, and I, I see we're going through Hurricane Utah. And I'm like, Hurricane Utah? Why is that something going on? Why is Hurricane Utah? Oh, it's in the IMDb credits for Octopussy. Oh, that's the bridge. Hey, kids, we're going to stop by the bridge. And let's just say that one of my two children, either my son or my daughter, said, Dad, I really need to go. And I said, well, we'll take a couple pictures and we'll go. He goes, no, no, I really need to go. <laughs> so we went. And then because we were in Utah and Las Vegas doing hiking, I think we urinated at four different James Bond locations, which is something I am <laughs> proud of. <laughs> But several times I've gone with people under the bridge, meaning what Thomas is saying, we're hanging under like a trestle and we're hanging over the gorge underneath the bridge where the plane flew. And then we also got on high and saw the whole, whole gorge from above. And we also hiked in the gorge in like 112 degree weather. It was awesome. You got to do it. You got to go to Utah to catch these five minutes of octopus. It's yeah. amazing. We spent Absolutely. three days to, to understand all the camera and work the five minutes of the films. Yeah. yeah you, right. you, you talk about hanging yeah. from the trestle. Here in Chicago, at the Museum of Science and Industry, they've got a, a 007 science exhibit they just opened up. Yeah. And one of the exhibits that you can do is they've got a beam that you can hang on, and there's a there's a, a little button you hit that does a countdown counter because Bond is hanging from from with his fingertips seconds. on this thing. And I think I got half a second. <laughs> <laughs> And Dan, you got about a second or two, right? She yeah. does CrossFit. She whipped everybody in DC. Uh, She's standing there hanging. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm walking away now. I'm going to go lead the rest of the tour. We have more Bond <laughs> stuff to see. I'll leave you there. We'll catch you back in a couple hours, right? Like, yeah. how come How come Danny Craig does that? Like, James yeah. Bond can't do, like, one pull-up, right, in yeah. Skyfall because he's on barbiturates and cocaine and alcohol. Yeah. And then later on, he's like, I'll take the lift to the 95th floor. I'll just yeah, no problem. <laughs> he's James no problem. Bond. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, the other thing in the, by this bridge that I really think is cool is I would spend a lot of time there because if you go across the street from the bridge, there's a new, a new housing development going in and there's, there's a beautiful overlook. And if you can stand there and look at the bridge and then turn left, you can totally imagine seeing that jet flying over to come in and go under the bridge. It's just, it is so beautiful oh, yeah. and it's, such an expansive area, especially if you can get on a bluff to the other side of the bridge. It right. is just so cool to see all of that. Right. I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm, can I say, I know I'm commenting on everything you say, but can I say I'm gratified to hear that because I spent hours going, how can I get to that overlook? Yeah. Or hours going, I see four trails, but they seem to run out and I'm reading trail guides and tra how can I get us under the thing? And one of the reasons to go there was because the plane goes very fast in like a U shape. And then when you're at the gorge, you go, oh, 
because fans will come take a picture of the bridge and leave. We go under the bridge, over the bridge. Mm -hmm. And when you turn around in a 360 on this bluff that you're talking about, it's like being in the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And you can look back towards where we were the day before at other bond sites, and you can look back towards Purple Mountains and Black Peaks and Orange Mountains, and you turn in a 360 view, and then you're looking down a couple hundred feet onto the James Bond airplane gorge. It's unreal. It's so beautiful. It's yep. just worth the trip. Yeah, it was All great. Right. Yeah, and now a little north of there, I'm not going to say where, there's this road. Canada. Yeah, it's Canada. It's the road that James Bond pulls out of the horse, the the um, the carriage that had the horse tail on the back of it, and takes off in the jet. And then later, when he lands the jet before he goes to fill it up, it's the same road. And they use that trick you talked about, where the camera's pointing one way when he takes off. They turn the camera around. It looks like you're in a totally different spot. And it's literally the same stretch of asphalt that they're going over. Exactly. Okay. Spinning round. Exactly. Yeah. So I have a, what do you call it? Oh, yeah, job. <laughs> but um, somehow I managed to cram in over the years 15 hours to diagram that scene. And I just, I, if there's two seconds of film or a deleted scene, I want to know. And a lot of people go, that's England, that's England. That's, it's not. It's Utah. Mm -hmm. And so when we were there, if you ever go back, I would love to go back. We went to three or four different sites yep. and we proved, and you all agreed, we looked at it. This is where the camera was. Look, there's a convenient road here. Yep. This is where the Jeep comes. And then we walked to the hill where they took the Jeep and turned it over on two wheels because yep. that was all natural landscape yep. that they weren't used. Yep. And so, and then we went another, you know, two miles, yep. parked somewhere very dangerous because the van we were in had a, was warm from driving around. And we were on dry grass and the owner of the house comes out and he goes, I don't mind you being here as a Bond fan, but you're going to set the place on fire. That was an eye opener. Yeah. And then we you know, ducked down because here's where the plane goes over the guards and the BD jet was going 10 feet over their heads. Yeah. So they did a lot more in Utah than people realize. And that's kind of like a fun thing. Like people go, oh, there's two, three locations there. No, no, no. There's at least 13 locations oh, yeah. with many different camera angles. Yeah. Very, very cool. And uh, it's north, and it's we'll say it's on the border of the gigantic Zion Valley National Park. Yeah, and it's it's cool a really really cool place. And you can get out, and we kind of did this, you know, pretended we were the guards shooting at the plane and stuff. Right, it's, right. It's and instead really of me cool taking time. that, that was a, a lift. And instead of me doing Ritalin or cocaine, what I do is I'll spend four hours <laughs> going up and down a road on Google Maps. Thank God for Google Maps going no in the movie the curve is a little bit like this and and meanwhile they're pulling the camera and foreshortening and i'll spend like hours and i'll say janine i spent another three hours but where people thought that was one thing it's four camera locations i've got it all now now i can take my friends and we can go because we're going to see the whole movie be in the whole movie and then da -da 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 -da. and yeah. so people are picking up rocks and things to yeah. bring home and uh they have rocks yeah. in their heads too like yeah. me so <laughs> well yeah. I, I do have to say janine's got to be a saint putting up with all of this from you <laughs> or a martyr possibly a martyr <laughs> and yeah no janine janine and i've done something like 34 multi-city day tours not mm -hmm. just bond but other things but all around the world and mm -hmm. and she tells me what i did wrong I'll think about it for like 25 hours and I'll go, I've got a great idea for the cosplay for James Bond. She goes, nope, do this. So she's very helpful that way. And uh, we have a good time going to all these locations. Right. Hey, Janine, guess what? We're going to Rome for four days and we're only going to walk the Spectre car chase for three of those days. <laughs> so you're probably going to get a cup of cappuccino in Rome and then we'll leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got to eat better than that there. All right, so then the kind of, almost ending scene of the movie is the chase on the Mesa when Bond's riding the horse and jumps yeah. on the plane. Yeah. And that is at Hurricane Mesa. In, it's in Zion National Park, right? Or is it right adjacent it's, to it? It's somewhat close and okay. it's on a restricted space that's used for private testing for military jets and ejector seats and all kinds of Bond stuff. Yeah, we were climbing through, through fences and stuff. I, it was like, we probably shouldn't have been there. But it was good to see. <laughs> it was a it was a small felony. Yeah. Just don't return to Utah until 2029. <laughs> and and people don't realize it was the first time in a film that someone it's such a small moment, like a couple seconds, but it's the first time in a movie ever that a stuntman rode a horse and then jumped on a moving plane. He had to acclimate the horse to the noise of the engine, which was off-putting. 
-hmm. and he's doing this work at several thousand feet above sea level mm -hmm. and we were on a giant mesa that can hold air force one it's at landing strip miles long yeah. and so we went where kamal touches down and crashes and where his mm -hmm. plane blows up and where they're hanging off the cliff and where the x marks the spot and because we had so geolocated it right you were standing in the exact spot where the horseman where bond jumps onto the yep. plane yep and and the mountains and everything and then we went somewhere else and i'm like you see this dizzying drop it's 800 feet down to the surround it's this gorgeous area you can see for 20 miles in the desert i'm like that's the view that kamal has when he's yep. crashing there you are here we are there there's you the go. cliff you know that alone was hours of crazy fun and hiking and this you know and then driving up that hill right yep. i've yep. never been applauded on a tour for driving but I took us up a mountain with no shoulder and 400 foot drops. Yeah. Whoa. And the road was not big enough for the vehicle we had. So I, I drove up honking the horn all the way. And when I got to the top, they applauded, I think out of being alive. Relief. So <laughs> relief. relief. We made it. Phew. Yeah, we made it. But, <laughs> and you couldn't do that with a 50 passenger bus, like on these bigger yeah. tours. This yeah. is more of a, hey, we're going to hike. We're going to be in the desert. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be different. Yeah. But when we got to the view, everyone's like, that was worth it. Yep. I mean, the stunning view that you would want to see anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's where the yeah. missile went. That's where the plane went. That's where well, James that, that was it. I mean, so you get up there and it, in a fairly short area, you know, not too far apart is all of these really, I mean, you know, the rock that they're hanging from, you know, with the, the oh, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm never going to be a stunt person. Hanging. Yeah, I'm never yeah. going to be a stuff. I'll sit as much. Yeah. yeah. I love what Bernie Casey said about that at one of our events. He was a Felix Leiter, never seen ever again. Right. He, and he was a football pro, right? right. Uh, a yeah. Hall of Fame football player. So he said, you do your own stunts? He goes, no, they can earn a living too. I've yeah. had enough concussions. They yeah. should earn a living. <laughs> That's a good so, way to think you know, of it. But Craig and Dalton, they just tore themselves up doing this stuff. Yeah. Just tore yep. themselves up. Yep. And uh, yeah, I like the paycheck, not the stunts. Yeah. yeah there you go. Well, and another place we went to, we went to a ghost town that they had shot oh, yeah. a scene from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Right. And so that was, that was you know, it wasn't the spy movie, it wasn't Octopussy or anything, but it, it, in that area, right. so it was, it was really cool to see. And you could almost hear the song Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head because that was the song playing when they show that scene. So Yes, and you and others recognized it on site, which was super cool. And yeah. just we we it, it can't be bond locations constantly or spy locations. It yeah. has to be what's something fun that you'd like, and it's just a really cool ghost town yep. near Zion Park, and it's just beautiful scene and a rugged bridge and the climb. And it was like my third time there again because they take different groups, and yep. it was just great. and family and Janine. Yep. It was great. Yeah, it was really always, really cool. Yeah, you're in the area. You might as well go see it, right? All right, so Matt, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the oh. highlights of that part of the trip. But I want right. to talk about what are you doing next? You've got another trip coming up, right? What What's next? We have two things in line, and we'd love for all the listeners and viewers to join us. And we say all, we'll take a thousand. If a thousand, we'll go. We'll make it happen. Janine and I have done Bond and Spy events with thousands of attendees. We've done events like All Time High, where it's just a dozen friends yeah. bonding. And so you do a great gonna, job with it. I appreciate that very much. It means a lot, especially coming from y'all, because you do these tours and you do these things. And every time I look, you're like, oh my God, where else in the world have they not been? Like you're somewhere <laughs> else. So we're going to Mexico City. Okay. And cool. Mexico City was something where in other cases, the first time I'm in Nassau, the Bahamas, I shouldn't tell anybody. The first time I was even in Chicago, actually, I was doing a Bond event. Mm -hmm. But but Mexico, we wanted to go. We went with our dear friends, Alan and Dorothy Hilburn, who are going on a lot of these trips with us. And just mm -hmm. the four of us went to Mexico City to go to all locations. So in October of this year, 2024, we'll take you to 50 locations. To be honest, it's more like 90. But when I say 90, nobody believes me. From <laughs> License to Kill, Spectre, deleted scenes. Like you'll go inside a gorgeous building with it's a palace. I'll be like, that's where Daniel Craig changed into a Spectre costume. Because we would never just take you to where you stood on the street. Right. And you'll dine at restaurants where they went and do all this stuff. And we play theme games and trivia. Mexico City is going to be amazing. It's solid touring for days on end where this entire day is just Spectre, just License to Kill, right. observatories of Professor Joe's. And also Janine and I are working on a couple of things, which is I was the guest keynote speaker at the James Bond Studies Conference in London uh, last year. And one of the reasons they tapped me to go was I led a walking tour of London and we saw actually places from Every one of the 14 Fleming books, and believe it or not, we worked hard on this, a couple of us, 
27 Bond films on wow. one walking tour. Wow. And it was great for me to catch films. And so I also led a Casino Royale movie screening and a plenary discussion for the group. So there's going to be a London event in summer of 2025 okay. and possibly tacked on to that because I don't know how much of the London event will be closed and how much will be open to fans because it's an academic event with panels, discussions, mm -hmm. students for credit. We're going to tack on Europe and tack on Italy. And Italy is like a top place where fans every so often go, Matt, when are you going to Italy? Or I got to go to Venice or I got to go. And why am I excited? I'm partnering with other people, working together for the people and doing great things. But in Italy, we have planned to go to several cities mm. that have never had any Bond group, never had any spy group. Awesome. And as much as I love Bond and Fleming, we're going to see things like Mission Impossible. And we're yeah. going to see things like The Third Man. And we're going to see things cool. like Medieval Spy. Well, and things that's that perfect for us because we're ago. spy movie navigator cracking the code of spy movies, not just James Bond. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. It's Man, where should they look cool. for you? What's your website? Tell everybody. I appreciate it. Bond fan events makes sense. It really needs a glamorous name like Spy Movie Navigator. But for some <laughs> stupid, churlish reason, I go, well, I do Bond fan events. I'll call it Bond fan events. So <laughs> like I'm not going to win the awards for that. Yeah, but it's, but it's a site that tells go, people what you do. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and when, when you go, com, there's, there's right? photos from a dozen events. And we've been doing events since 1998, 25 years. I've had an email subscription list for 30 yeah. years. And yeah. all these locations, you'll see hundreds of photos, locations, 100 celebrities that we did. But there you can jump in, subscribe, get involved with Mexico City, get involved with London, get involved with Italy. I'm also working on more events for Florida. I'm always interested in going, even if it's just a friend or two, and they say, hey, let's get together. Let's go to Vegas again. Let's do something. You send me a note. We yeah. have many people stay at my home. Yeah. my james bond room m approves yeah. you get m over Very here good. and but but my my bond room is all mostly on props and yeah, yeah. some things you've done and louisiana to too come right here for hours. live and let die stuff in louisiana you've done too right? oh my gosh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool uh, new stuff. orleans new york chicago yeah. san francisco las vegas los yeah, angeles yeah. jamaica bahamas mexico city Rome, that's the guy et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, That's why we, we have we you it. on. Always good to have it's you, man. Calm. This is fantastic to have okay, so our again, experts yeah, on the show. And again, it's, it's bondfanevents.com. Bondfanevents.com. Look for M. That's me, <laughs> Matt. I will have a good time. All right. That's a wrap. Thanks, Matt. It's always great to have the experts like you on our show. More Bond sites visited and more to come. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Thanks to all yeah. listeners and watchers. Thank you. All yeah. right. This has been Dan. And Tom. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com on our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Subscribe to our show through your favorite podcast app and to our YouTube channel as well. Lots of fun stuff there. Give us a five-star rating, too, while you're at it. That helps. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you spending time with us. <laughs>